Welcome back to Cheddar's opening bell. As coronavirus cases skyrocket in some of the largest states in the nation, the White House seems to be changing its tune on controlling the pandemic. And joining us now to discuss is Natalie Jennings, editor of The Fix, the Washington Post political analysis blog. It's great to have you with me this morning, Natalie. A Vice President Mike Pence telling governors to protect citizens however they can, and the President now wearing a mask. What does this shift in messaging by the administration tell you? Good morning. I mean, it tells me that they are really reckoning with the reality now. Sometimes their rhetoric doesn't um, reflect that. But it's really remarkable, the shift from just, we're less than a month from Vice President Pence um, publishing an op-ed saying things like, we're on a, our way to winning this, um, that panic about the coronavirus is overblown, to now him going on uh, this call yesterday and saying, do what you need. It is not the same as them saying, you know, we'll, we'll, we're here to guide you and protect you. They're being consistent in that they still want states to take the lead on this, but it is pretty striking and telling. Mm -hmm. uh, does this have anything to do with the Trump campaign's move to try to appease these moderate voters like suburban women who we know he's fallen out of favor with since the pandemic started? I think Yes, on a macro level, this um, this pandemic is going to have a major impact on the economy. We are less than four months from the election now, and cases are skyrocketing. We are averaging about 60,000 cases. We're seeing states that are dominated by Republicans as well as swing states um, rolling back the steps they've taken to open their economy. That is going to impact schools. And as you know, those suburban moms you're talking about, um, women are deeply affected by whether schools go back, but everyone is um, affected as well by businesses not being able to open because, um, you know, these cases are surging and it's not safe. In the backdrop of all of this, Natalie, on the Democratic side, Vice President Joe Biden, who is running for president, obviously unveiling a $2 trillion clean energy plan. What do we know about it so far? So we know a few things. We'll obviously know more today, but we know that it is more ambitious than what he said before. He has a comfortable lead in the polls now, and I think that's allowing him to sort of uh, think bigger uh, as of this moment on what he will do. So that includes things like, um, you know, rolling back power plant emissions by 2035. That's a pretty tight timeline. Creating a climate change core, expanding, dramatically expanding solar and wind energy. And I think it's just being a little more ambitious than we might have seen this were a tighter race at this point. In $2 trillion, Natalie, obviously Democrats pushing for cleaner energy, but at the time where we're still trying to recover from the pandemic, is this something that you think could actually pass and that actually will have really any legs if Biden does get elected? So one thing that he is doing is syncing this up with his economic agenda. So last week we saw him release his economic plan. Um, and this, in what we've seen of it so far, he's economic, or emphasizing that there is some economic benefit to doing this. So that will be probably essential to passing it. The other thing, of course, that will be essential is the Senate um, also being in Democratic control mm -hmm. and the House remaining in Democratic control. So um, he is planning on something that will require not... Um, total compromise with Republicans that would mean that he has um, dominated government across the board and that he can do this. Mm -hmm. And Natalie, of course, the reopening of schools a massive debate and conversation right now. And what we're learning is that the senators and members of the House actually do support in the next stimulus bill providing some sort of funds to these schools so that they can reopen safely in the fall. President Trump obviously wants uh, the schools to reopen. Do you anticipate that he would support a bill if it would come to his desk that would include funding for schools? I would anticipate that, yes. Um, it's going to be driven by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, um, and I think President Trump could take his cues from that. Um, I think his opinion will be brought in wherever um, McConnell, uh, with you know whatever McConnell agrees to proceed on. I don't think we'll see the Senate proceed with something that Trump wouldn't approve. And mm -hmm. uh, Senator McConnell did say that school funding, allowing schools to open, will be a top priority in whatever he considers next. Mm -hmm. Uh, Natalie, I also want to ask you about Mary Trump's book coming out today, niece of President right. Trump. How could this hurt the president? I don't know that it will sway a lot of votes. Um, this book, we've seen a lot of sort of tell-alls about the Trump administration, um, learned a lot about the way that the president operates. Um, I think this um, 
probably is a particularly sensitive, uh, you know, way to go about doing a tell-all for him and also gives um, people a way into sort of how he operates. I think the, uh, like, psychological details that his niece goes into about why Trump operates the way he does may inform, um, you know, future ways pres people approach the president. So that, more than any particular fact uh, that comes out of the book, will be, you know, the interesting thing that I think we see after this. And she is a licensed psychologist, right, Natalie? Right, yes, she is certainly in sort of a um, an interesting Venn diagram when it comes to President Trump with that background and her family connection to him. All right, uh, Natalie, in terms of the landscape for the coronavirus, obviously this is a huge focus of the Trump administration. We started this segment earlier by talking about how we've seen such a shift in messaging. What's your current pulse on the American voting population? How much does it matter to them? And do you anticipate that some of these moderate voters, African Americans, suburban women can actually be swayed between now and November? I don't know that they need to be swayed between now and November if things stay like they are. Um, I think, um, you know, if we continue to see four more months of economic conditions like they are, that's going to be very frustrating for people. So there is a big hole that just grows bigger by the day for Trump to climb out of, um, both in terms of the virus and public health. Obviously, that is the, the chief thing on many people's mind is they want to stay safe. Um, but it's creating all these other effects and affecting, you know, as everyone knows, every part of your life. And, and that is what people are going to um, take to the ballot box. I remembered after the 2016 election, uh, something that stuck with me is people voted on what affected them, not what offends them. And that's mm. a lot of the reason that people stuck with President Trump. Mm. This this virus, I can hardly think of anything that affects people so much in every aspect of this. So, uh, That's right, Natalie. And of course, uh, just concerns how the, the school system has become a political issue. Obviously, that's a hurdle probably that the Trump administration is going to have to face down the road as well as uh, school time starts here in just a few weeks. We got to mm -hmm. leave it there, Natalie. Uh, thank you for joining. You'll have to come on again. Natalie is the editor of The Fix at The Washington Post.